Hello, welcome to Engineering Physics Course A. Myself, Dr. Mannam Ramanjanailu, Assistant Professor, Division of Physics, Department of Science and Humanities, Vignans Foundation for Science, Technology and Research. In this video, I would like to introduce the concept of crystalline materials, amorphous materials and polycrystalline materials. By the end of this video, you will be able to understand and also differentiate between crystalline materials, amorphous materials and polycrystalline materials. Now, to start with, to understand this, we will start with the classification of materials. As you all know that in the universe, materials are classified into solids, liquids and gases. As, as you can see in the picture, the atoms and molecules in the solid are tightly bound together with chemical bonds. In the case of liquids, they can move relatively freely. And in the case of gases, they are completely free and can move randomly in all the directions. There is another class of material called plasma. Plasma is a fourth state of matter. As you can see, there exists a mixed, mixed state of materials. In the plasma, there exist atoms, molecules, excited atoms, electrons, photons, etc. So, the classification of materials are of four types. This is about the classification. However, in this course, we mainly focus on the studying of the solids. Now, let us go into the solids. A solid is a one of the four fundamental prop, uh, classification of material. Solid is characterized by the atoms or molecules arranged such that their shape and volume are fixed relatively stable. Now the question is, how the atoms and molecules in the solid are arranged? Is the atoms and molecules are randomly arranged? Are they regularly arranged? For the same material, if the, atoms and if the atoms are arranged regularly, then one can expect a different properties compared to when atoms are arranged randomly. That means, how the atoms are arranged in a material will play an important role in determining its properties. So, based on the arrangement of atoms in the solids, we can classify the solids as follows. If the atoms are arranged regularly, periodically as shown in the figure, then they are called as crystalline materials. If the atoms are arranged randomly, then they are called as amorphous materials. Intermediate between these two, there exist a polycrystalline materials. Crystalline materials and polycrystalline materials are having a great advantages and also having a lot of applications in science and technology. So we will study mostly on more on crystalline materials and amorphous materials. Let us go into the crystalline materials and try to understand it. As we know that the, from the definition, a crystalline material where atoms or molecules are arranged regularly, periodically, symmetrically. What is the meaning of this? Let us consider a, a simple one-dimensional model of a crystal and visualize the uh, visualize the crystal structure. Let us consider an atom at a, at a origin and the x-axis. Let us place another atom at a distance a along the x-axis. Now, place another atom at a, distance, at a distance from the origin 2a, 3a, 4a and so on along the x-axis. Now, you can see there is a, a, a regular periodic arrangement of atoms in the one dimension. You can see atoms are arranged regularly and periodically with a periodicity of A. This is a one dimensional crystal. We can, as, we can also visualize the crystal structure in two dimensions. Now let us place another atom in the y axis at a distance B. Now place another atom in the y axis at 2B, 3B, 4B and so on. Repeat these atoms 
with a periodicity a and b along x and y directions respectively throughout xy space. Now you can see a full two dimensional crystal structure in the picture. This is how we can visualize a two dimensional crystal structure. We can also visualize a three dimensional crystal structure by repeating the atoms in along the z direction with a different periodicity. So in this way, you can see in this, the atoms are arranged regularly, periodically along all the different directions. And also there, is a, there exists a symmetry in the crystal. This is about the crystal structure. That means in the crystal structure, the atoms and molecules are arranged regularly, periodically and symmetrically. Now let us go into the polycrystalline material. The polycrystalline material, as its name suggests, there is a large number of small crystallites are placed adjacent to each other such that the orientation of one grain does not match with other grain. You can see in the picture, there is a one small crystallite in which the atoms are arranged regularly, periodically. And also, you can see the other grains, there is a regular periodic arrangement of atoms. However, the atomic arrangement in the one grain does not match with the atomic arrangement in the other grain. So, they are well separated by a boundary line called grain boundaries. That means a polycrystalline material consists of a large number of small, small microcrystals called grains are, are put together forms a, a polycrystalline material. So examples for the polycrystalline materials are most metals forms a polycrystalline material. In the polycrystalline material, a small part called grain will have a, a crystal structure, another grain will have a crystal structure, but the orientation of the atoms in one, one grain will not match with the orientation of the atoms in other grain. This is the polycrystalline material. Now let us list out some important differences between the crystalline materials and amorphous materials. As you can see in the picture, the first difference is obviously uh, the arrangement of atoms. In the crystalline materials, the atoms are arranged regularly, periodically, symmetrically. We know that this from the definition. In the amorphous material, there is no such regular periodic arrangement of atoms. Now, because of the regular arrangement of atoms, crystalline materials will have a long range of atomic order. Whereas in the case of amorphous material, there is no such long range order because the atoms are arranged randomly. Because of regular periodic arrangement in the crystal structure, periodic arrangement means the distance between the two successive atoms is constant throughout the crystal. That means the bonding between the adjacent atoms in the crystal throughout the crystal structure is uniform in the case of crystalline materials. Whereas in the case of amorphous material, the periodicity is not constant, so the, the bonding between the adjacent atoms will also be not uniform. So the bonding is uniform in the crystalline structure, the bonding is not uniform in the amorphous structure. Now since the bonding is uniform, crystalline materials possess a sharp melting points because Bonding is uniform, so when we give a heat energy, all the atoms will, will take exactly equal amount of energy and will break at a, at a certain amount of temperature. Whereas in the case of amorphous material, the bonding is not uniform. So the melting starts from certain temperature to higher temperature because different bonds requires different amount of energy to break it. For example, for a some crystal, if it requires 100 degrees centigrade to melt in a crystalline material, it exactly starts melting, melting at 100 degrees centigrade. In the case of amorphous material, it starts melting from 95 degrees centigrade onwards to 105 degrees centigrade. That means the melting spans over a temperature range. In addition to this, the crystalline materials possess anisotropy. That means different properties are different in different directions. That means electrical conductivity, thermal conductivity, mechanical strength are different in different directions of the crystal materials. Whereas in the case of amorphous material, there is no such 
anisotropic nature. The amorphous materials are isotropic because atoms are arranged randomly. Crystalline materials are also called as true solids. Amorphous materials are called as supercooled liquids because amorphous materials are prepared by heating it to a molten state. From the molten state, the material will be cooled down suddenly to the lower temperature so that the amorphous material will be formed. So that's the reason why we can call it as amorphous solids or supercooled liquids. The examples for the crystalline materials are diamond, sodium chloride, cesium chloride, etc. The examples for the uh, amorphous materials are glass, rubber, plastic, etc. In summarizing this today topic, we have known the crystalline materials are in which the atoms are arranged regularly, periodically, symmetrically. In the amorphous materials, there is no such regular arrangement of atoms. In the polycrystalline material is, it's a collection of large number of small grains in which the atoms are arranged regularly, but the orientation of one grain of atoms will not match us with the other grain of atoms.